Our trip through the Creeper World X demo continues with Mission 2, and there are new aspects worth knowing about before we begin. Unstable land will gradually decay over time completely on its own. This reality turns the emitter in this tree essentially into a time bomb. Breeder makes a return in liquid form. Any Creeper making contact with it will replicate. Creeper damage land will be destroyed by Creeper. Tom is an automated sentry gun, much more powerful when you feed it Angorium. The jewels scattered across the map are capturables for a simplified upgrade system. Choices are firing rate, range, energy, or movement speed. Anti-Creeper Ore has its own emitter. Easily recognized as drones from Creeper World 2, bots work effectively the same way. They'll destroy any of our units that they reach but have no ranged attack. There's an info cache awaiting us and then a slab of rock below in this open area that has a surprise. Unless you're being completionist, you can ignore this area. No reactors to start this time, plus we have more units to power, so we'll deploy them right away. A major change from previous games is that all units in Ix have a limited amount. Reactors also have to be placed closely adjacent to land. Again, I'll place the digger on the other side of the map, get us access to that anti-creeper ore and a couple of upgrade gems. Anti-creeper requires placing an ore miner nearby. One of our new ships is the Cryon, which is able to freeze small sections of Creeper temporarily. It also has a lathe, and we'll use that to release the Angorium and grab another upgrade gem. I don't want to stall the buildup of our reactors too much, so I'll wait a bit to place this. Once they come online and our storage begins to build, it's time to assemble the fleet. My plan here is to knock out that first emitter in the slowly decaying tree as quickly as possible. These roundish aqua-colored ships are Makers, our latest new toy. As they did in Creeper World 2, they dispense the anti-creeper. First couple of upgrades are in, let's boost firing rate and range each one. By clearing out from the side instead of below, I'm hoping to nullify the emitter while it's still in the decaying remnants of the tree. By default, the Maker will simply shoot any Creeper within range. I think they're much more effective set to dump, similar to the Creeper World 3 sprayers being always on. This results in a fountain of anti-Creeper blanketing the nearby area. And success! First emitter down! The slope of the terrain here presents a pretty good opportunity. We'll just knock out the rest of the tree, let the anti-creeper flow downhill and clear it out, and move on to our next target. That means digging, lots of digging. My goal here is to cut off the pathways for the creeper to reach underground and get to that creeper breeder liquid before all of those passageways decays and it can actually get through.
Here I decided I really wanted the digging speed also affected by the fire rate upgrade, so I decided to cash in the range one. And then it's just a race. Are we going to get there in time? <laughs> it's not by much, but just as the creeper's starting to enter the passageway, we finish the digging, stone collapses, and then that creeper follows it to plug the hole. Now we'll open up the creeper cavern and there's going to be quite a bit of creeper plus some very angry drones to deal with here. We'll just gradually open it up more, bring our ships down, and since this is going to be a bit of a slugfest, boost the speed some. Equals key increases it, minus key decreases it. Take some time, but we eventually wear down the Creeper Reservoir. <laughs> Our reward is an unjustified and exaggerated compliment. With both emitters down, all that's left is this final X core to the right, sitting in a small but very dense pool of creeper. I have no intention of being subtle about this. Let's just clear out a large area, push forward, and eventually blast all the creeper away. And here comes the Sandvalanche. Every game of this type has a certain rhythm in terms of leapfrogging your ships forward, when to do it. Definitely a little slow on the timing here. And here comes the wall of creeper. I don't know if it'll really help to move the makers down, but decide to do it anyway. There definitely are some just die already moments in the game so far. Much like previous games in the series, it will really be a touchy balance to try to strike. Building up enough to be stable and then attacking fast enough that the creeper doesn't have time to build up to absurd levels. A lot of the connections with the passageways earlier in the level were interesting, but a dense pool like this that you just have to plow through, not that interesting to me. Once again, the Rift Blade announcing we have won, and it's time to go. 